and welcome to DTWG The Prep Welcome. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through um, your GED maths, where we're going to be looking at uh, we're looking at polynomials. Uh, okay, where I'm going to I'm going to be starting with um, algebraic expression first, then we'll go into polynomials. Know what a polynomial is. Okay, so this is the prerequisite to um, you know jumping into polynomials. All right, so we're going to be looking at simplifying, multiplying, expanding expressions. Okay, we'll be looking at the distributive property formula. Just hold on on this, uh, and uh, I will get to this. Okay, uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. So we have ten questions here that are. Um, you know, GED similar questions because I hear a lot of uh, students ask, are these the actual GED questions? I can't give you the actual GED questions, okay, but I can give you a similar GED question, all right? So these are similar GED questions you can come across during your test. Okay, before I go further into the video, please, if this is your first time on this channel, please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also check our website, dtwgdprep.com for summary notes, study guides, free practice questions, your GED math formula sheet, okay? And you can also join our Facebook group. We are over 22,000 uh, members in the community to support you. You can ask for the GED um, test in your state, whichever state in the US, we have a community that can support you and also motivate you when you're feeling down okay all the links i would leave in the video description box of this video and also if you require one-on-one -on -one tutoring for your ged math science social studies or rla i can teach you one-on-one -on -one via zoom online you can also contact me and you know we'll take it up from there so uh let's get on to the video now now, question one says this. This is the question. So you will see something like um, simplify this. All right. The question usually comes simplify. All right. You know, students do usually ask me what's the difference between simplify and evaluate. All right. Don't worry. There'll be a video on evaluation. Okay. Evaluate. When it's, when you see a question evaluate, it means there might um, the question would give you a um, a value for the variable here for for example for example one this is x the question will give you let's say x is equal to minus two and they will ask you evaluate this when x is minus two but when you say simplify simplify you are not evaluating all you need to do is in simplifying is grouping like terms all right that's what you do in simplification all right you group like terms now, how do you know like terms? Let me just give you straight to the point, easy way. To know like terms, you have to go to the variables. Now, what is a variable? A variable is, they are the letters in math. You know, this is algebra. Variables are the letters. It can be X, it can be A, B, it can be any letter from the, let, from the alphabet A to Z, okay? It can be any letters from the alphabet A to Z. So don't be, you know, test up when you see something other than X or Y. You know, in algebra, you're, the most common variable that is used is either X or Y. So I see some of my students who I tutor one-on-one. -on -one, when they see something I, like R or N, they panic. It's still the same thing, okay? You can you the, uh, any question can take a variable from the letters, the alphabet, A to Z, okay? So it's not just only X and Y. So these are the variables, all right? So that's the first thing in grouping. You check for the variables. You see that this guy is the same to this, right? You have the same variable. Then how do you also confirm for that that they are like terms, okay? They, are, they have common terms. Now the next thing you go to is their power. Is the powers the same? Yes, it's the same. So it means that we can combine positive x squared and positive three x squared okay and also in maths when you have in an algebraic expression when you have a number standing alone like in this is a negative three and this is a positive seven they are called constants 
okay? That is what's called in maths. They are called constants. Numbers that stand alone without any variable attached to them are called constants, all right? So I know you have been here, you, you've been wondering why am I saying negative three? Why am I saying positive x squared? Why am I saying positive, uh, this is positive three x? Why am I saying positive two x? Why am I saying positive seven? You must note that when collecting like terms, you must always carry them along with their sign. Very, very important. Okay? Like for this negative three, you don't just pick three and combine with seven. No. You would get it all wrong. The sign of three here in this expression is negative. It's always, you know, I've taught um, in, um, there's a video which I've done, I've uploaded. It's on understanding sign numbers, the sign rules, you know, integers, sign integers. How do you understand them? In algebra, every sign, every number takes the sign in front of them, not the sign after them. Please take note of this. They take the sign in front of them, all right? So the sign of three here is a negative. The sign of seven here is a positive. When you see a number standing alone, it means the number is a positive number. So you have this, the number is positive, all right? So now let us group, let us simplify this. So we have here seven plus x squared minus 3 plus 3x squared. Now, you start with the term, you know, each, each, uh, each numbers here that stand alone, they are called terms, okay? So this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, all right? So we start with the term with the highest power, that's highest exponent. So which is what? We group them, which is this, these are like terms. So let's group them. So we have positive x squared and positive 3x squared. Do you see that? And so, and here, the next is the, the constants, right? Which is what? 7 here is a positive 7. 3 here is a negative 3. Then we can combine these two. Since they are like terms, we can combine these two. A positive x squared plus positive 3x squared, it means we're adding. This x squared here means there's an invisible one here. So it means we're adding 1 plus 3, which gives us what? 4x squared. Then what is a positive 7, negative 3? That's where understanding your signed rules come to play. When you have a positive and negative, you are going to do subtraction. And when you do subtraction, you have a 4. That's you subtract 3 from 7. Now, what sign would 4 take? There's a sign positive here. There's a sign negative. It's always the sign of the bigger number. So positive 4, right? So here we draw positive 4. So this is our final answer. We have simplified this expression. All right? Are you with me? Okay, so this is the answer here. Now for the second question, you can see it is 3y squared plus 8 minus 9y squared plus 5 plus y. Now we have to combine like terms. As I said, start with the x with the with the term with the highest power. This is a like term. This these are common terms, right? So we can group them together, all right? So we have 3y squared minus 9y squared. This y takes a minus. Then the next are the constants. So, or, oh, we have a y here. So we can just put, it's just alone. So just put plus y, okay? Because the arrangement, you arrange them in order from the highest power to the lowest, okay? So this y here has a power of 1. So here we have here for our constant, which is positive 8, positive 5. We can combine these two. We can combine these two to be 1. So here, this is a positive 3y squared minus 9y squared. When you have a positive and negative, you subtract. When we subtract, we have 6y squared. What sign will it take? It will always take the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So negative 6y squared plus y. Then 8 plus, you know, this is positive, positive. So that will be what? 8 plus 13. So we have simplified this. Are we following? All right. So now 
here look at this this is 2y plus 4 plus 18y plus 8 so you can see these two are common they are like terms so we can group them so this is 2y plus 18y these two also are constant so we group them that's 4 plus 8 so this is quite easy 2y plus 18y that's 20y then 4 plus 12, uh, 8, that is what? 12. So we have simplified this. Now let's look at this. Let me quickly clean up this place so we have, we have good space. So here, number 4 says 13x cubed plus 4 minus 2x squared in parentheses 17 plus x squared all right now this is 13 x cube is there any power with an x cube here no so this stays alone so we drop it you know from the highest power to um, the lowest now the next power is x squared but you can see here there's a parenthesis here and there's a 2x squared here so it means we need to open up this we need to multiply this means 2x squared times 17. So that would be a negative. Don't forget your negative. This 2 is a negative 2x squared. So it should be a negative 2x squared times 17, which is a negative 34x squared. Then plus x squared. We can combine these two. So we'll bring it down here as a negative 34x squared plus x squared. Then our constant will be the last year, which is plus 4. It's just alone, so we leave it alone. Okay, so now finally we have 13x cubed, then minus 34x squared plus x squared. You know, this is there's an invisible one that is 34 minus 1, which will give us 33x squared. And what sign will it take? It will take the sign of the bigger number, which is negative. So we have then plus 4. So this is our final answer. Now, look at number 5. Number five says 3x minus 4 in parentheses, x minus y. So this is like a binomial. Now, how do you distribute this negative 4? You know, it was easy for us to distribute this. Negative 2x squared times 17. This is just 17. We just multiplied it. Now, how do you distribute negative 4 between this? This comes to our distributive word property. That when you have a in parentheses, b plus c, what do you do? You do a times b first, it gives you a, b, sorry, we can start here. It gives you a times b, it gives you a, b, and a times c gives you a, c. If it's a negative, you know you know why they're, they're, they're making you take note of this negative? That the signs are all also involved in the operation. I have done, um, please, in algebra, you see this, I, you know I'm always coming to this, understanding the sign rules, your integers. It's very, very important. I have done addition and subtraction of signed integers. I have also done multiplication and division of signed integers. I've explained the rules there. Please do watch that video and understand it well. All right. So here you can see when it's a negative times B, you can see it affects the negative affects the B. So it gives us negative B just the way it affected this negative two affected this. Okay. So. It's going to affect, you distribute this to the two, the first and the second term inside the parentheses. Now, let us do this together, number five. Okay, that's why I, I you know, we're going to do a lot of questions on this distributive property so you understand it well. Okay, so number five. So we have three X. We first of all have to open up this expand. It's called expanding. So in expanding your expression, you use your distributive property, okay? So we do minus 4 times x, it gives us minus 4x. And we do minus 4 times minus 9. The minus will multiply the minus, it gives us positive. Look at here, look at the distributive property formula, okay? Remember in multiplication, when you have the sign multiplication, a negative times a positive is a negative. Also, a positive times a negative is a negative, okay? A negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is also 
a positive. This is the rule for multiplication, okay, of signs. So you have positive, then 4 times 9 is what, 36. So here we can go ahead to simplify. Here we have two common terms here, two like terms here, so we can combine these two. This is a positive 3x minus a negative 4x. We are going to subtract. Okay, so we subtract 4 from 3, we have a 1x. And the sign, we take the sign of the bigger number, so which is a minus 1x plus 3x. But you know in maths, we don't put 1 here. We leave it as what x, so it will be a minus x plus 36. This is what you see in your option during your test. You won't see a 1 in front, okay? Because in maths, say 1 times x is still x, okay? So, number 6, we need space. Let me quickly clear this. You know, I don't want to clear the whole screen because, you know, I've explained some things. So, you still, you know, follow me and all that. Let's manage the space for number six. It says two in parentheses y plus eight plus three in parentheses y minus seven. So we distribute two times y. This is a positive two. So positive two times y is a two y. Positive two times positive eight is a positive 16. Here we have a positive three times y is a positive three y. And positive three times a negative seven Positive times negative is negative, and 3 times 7 is 21. So we can combine like term. This is a like term to this. So we have 2y, positive 3y, then positive 16, uh, and a negative 21. A 2y plus 3y is a 5y. And what is this positive 16 uh, minus 21? So that's going to give us a 5. It means we'll subtract 16 from 21, which will give us a 5. And the sign, we take the sign of the negative bigger number, which is what negative. So our answer is what? 5y minus 5. Now, let's go to number 7. It says here, 5 minus in parentheses x minus 7 plus 5x. You know, you now begin to wonder that I can just open up this bracket and that's it. No, you can't. There's an invisible one here, okay? So you use this negative, and there's a sign here. So you use this negative one to distribute in this parenthesis. So here we have five, a negative one times x will give us a negative x, and a negative one times a negative seven will give us a positive seven, because negative times negative from our formula is positive. And 1 times 7 is 7. So we have, then we drop our plus 5x. Now we can combine like term. All right? So this guy is a like term to this. So we have negative x plus we we'll group them together. Then this is a positive 5. So we have positive 5, positive 7. We group these two together. So we combine these two. This is a negative. This is an invisible one here. So it means a negative 1 plus 5. That means we'll subtract. So we have 4. What sign will 4 take? It should take a positive because the bigger number is positive. So that's 4x. Don't forget the variable. All right. Then positive 5, positive 7. That will give us a positive 12. All right. So this is our, our final answer. Would then be 4x plus 12. Okay. You don't need to put the positive here because 4x here means it's positive. All right, please stay with me. I know it's quite a lengthy video, but you know, we are learning here, okay? More examples, more practice make you learn. That's why I made them 10. All right, so number eight says six X plus two in parentheses X minus two. All right, so we open up. So we have six X positive two times X. That's a positive two X, positive two times a negative two that will give us a negative four because positive times negative is negative here which this is already grouped together so we can combine six x plus two x that will give us eight x then we drop our negative four so this is the answer now look at number nine we have a negative in parentheses x plus five negative two in parentheses x plus seven 
So we have to distribute. Remember, there's an invisible one here. So we have the negative 1 times x, that's a negative x. Negative 1 times positive 5 will give us a negative 5. Here, to distribute, we have a negative 2 times x. Don't just say 2 times x, you are going to miss it. And the funny thing about the test is, they know the error that you are probably going to make. So when you miss not using this negative to multiply, the answer will be there when you miss it. But And when you get it correctly, the answer will be there. So be careful with your signs. Always use the negative in front of the, the, the value here to open up, to distribute in the parentheses. So negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. Negative 2 times positive 7 is a negative 14. So we combine like term this and this guy. So negative x, negative 2x, and we combine the constants as negative 5, negative 14. Now, when we have negative, negative from our rules, we add. This is in 1 here, so we add 1 plus 2, which will give us 3x, and the sign will also take the sign of the bigger number, which is what negative. The same thing also, when we have a negative and a negative sign number, we add. And it gives us what 19 and the sign will take the sign of the bigger number which is what negative so our final answer here is what a negative 3x negative 19. now let's look at number 10. so we have 7x here we use this this is an invisible one we use this to multiply everything in the parentheses so a negative 1 times a negative 10x that will give us a positive 10 x square a negative one times a positive four will give us a negative four and here we have a negative three we just drop this down so here we combine since these two are like terms so seven x squared plus ten x squared gives us seventeen x squared and here we have a negative three negative uh, negative four negative three what would that give us we're adding so we have seven and the sign will take negative so we have seventeen x squared minus seven so we have simplified all this we have multiplied we have also expanded okay expression with i've also have explained distributive property formula all right so thank you for staying to the end of this video please do subscribe to this channel give this video a thumbs up share with your friends family loved ones preparing for the GED test in your various groups and also if you need summary notes on science social studies please do check our website for free practice questions there you can join the Facebook group also for several resources okay all links and the video description box of this video you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring you can also contact me and lastly and finally please don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon Please do give your life to Christ, for he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the one who is going to lead us to heaven at last. And he's also going to give us that life here on earth, that heaven on earth that Jesus taught us how to pray about. Okay, he's going to give that to us here. And Jesus is calling you today. He's just saying, you know, give me all your burdens and take of me. Okay, take of me, take of my yoke. It is light. It's going to carry all your burdens for you. As far as you just accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, he will give you rest. He will give you peace. And the most important thing, he will lead you to heaven at last. All right, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for staying tuned. I wish you success in your GED test and also in life. You are destined to win.